Well, hello and welcome to another Tyrrell's Classic Workshop. And this is a car that I've been thinking of featuring for some time as a make and model. This is the Mercedes 600 Grosse, as it's called, or Big in German. Um, this is the, the Ultra Economy short wheelbase model. It's a, an 012 chassis number car, um, which was their sort of standard version of the 600. And the 600 was... Um, uh, really out there as a concept for Mercedes-Benz. Um, it was launched in 1963 and it had all sorts of whizzy things on it um, that were hardly seen before, possibly some of them never seen after and anywhere in between. Um, it really was a very interesting car and there's been loads of people on, the, uh, on YouTube making videos about Mercedes 600s um, quite often getting things wrong, frankly, about the technical aspect of the car. Um, I first worked on these in 1992, so I've been working on them a few years and um, I've got the original workshop manual with all the notes in about different quantities made in different configurations. Um, so I've done my fair share of work on them. This car is not in for a full restoration. It's come from Germany, it's a right-hand drive car and it's going to go to the Far East once it's finished. The more, the more um, astute amongst you may have noticed that it's a little less than Concorde condition. So what we actually, our, our brief is to get the car running and sort the mechanicals out. Um, I mean, there's things like, because the windows are hydraulically operated, if the system depressurizes, they can sink and, um, and all sorts of interesting things. The boot lid can come open because that also is hydraulically operated by high pressure oil. We, we have not been instructed to turn this into something amazing because that would cost six figures of anybody's money just like that we'll, we'll give it a clean up we'll get rid of all this tape off the windows and off the panels it's one of those it could go either way this it could clean up half decently it's never going to be beautiful but it could clean up half decently or it could we could spend lots of man hours cleaning it and it looks a little different um, it's very difficult to say but um, we will just just because we can, we'll spend some time cleaning it, whether we charge the customer for it or not, because it offends me being in this unkempt and rather sad condition. So we'll do something with it. But um, yeah, mechanicals first, and we'll see if the cosmetics bring the car back to life in some way. Six hundreds are, are um, a whole law unto themselves, really. This is the the owner driver type six hundred. Um, you had the um, the O one four chassis number cars, which uh, were this long again, and they were called a six hundred Pullman. Uh, and that you could either have them in four door format with the, with a, a gap here and then the back door there, with conference seating as it was called, with the standard back seat and two seats facing that way. Um, make sure you've got clean knees because there's hardly any leg room between the two. Um, or you could have a six door Pullman um, with three rows of seating. Uh, some jump seats here and, uh, and the fact the, the, the 600 is probably one of the most filmic and filmed makes and models of car ever made. I think there have been 600s used in more films than any, any other car ever conceived. Um, they are a, a symbol of um, excess, they're a symbol of power, they're, um, they're a symbol of don't mess with me, uh, I'm going to push you peasants out of the way. I mean, it, it's, it's all that, really. And that's why so many heads of state opted for 600s, most of them not the short wheelbase ultra economy model like this, more often the long wheelbase, and then we get into the landolettes, which either had a huge um, hydraulically powered soft top that disappeared into the boot, or it ended there where the, th the third door on the Pullman started. All sorts of different permutations. The first car I worked on in the 90s was a 600 Pullman with the conference seating, and the first owners were the Mars family, the chocolatiers. I mean, that, that's typical of a 600. They've all been owned by interesting people. Um, I did some work years ago um, on a 600 that had been owned by Coco Chanel, uh, she was the first owner. So uh, the, all 600s have got a story to tell. They are fearsomely complicated and people get, get things mixed up. They say the suspension's hydraulic, um, 
the, uh, the boot lid and the doors are controlled by high pressure air. It's actually the other way round and that the shock absorbers are adjustable electrically, which is not true, they're done by hydraulics. I'm going to sort of set the record straight and go into what makes a 600 tick or whine or purr or go boosh if one of the hydraulic pipes decides to, uh, to burst. And um, they run, when, when the hydraulic system is functioning and the hydraulic, it's called a comfort hydraulic system. Um, and it controls everything that moves on the car, essentially. Um, if that bursts, it's pressurized at 3,000 pounds per square inch. So you do know about it uh, if you have a pipe that's burst. There's a shut-off valve in the engine compartment, which you hastily have to open the bonnet on and twiddle away to close it before any more hydraulic fluid leaks out. It's quite a business. Um, when they were new, because of their sheer complexity, let's just say people encountered problems with them right from the get-go, like being stuck in the car, they couldn't open the doors. Um, this, is, this is American customers who've paid a lot of money for their shiny new Mercedes 600. They're more complicated probably than a light aircraft, technically, seriously, and probably a mid-range aircraft. Uh, there's a lot going on in here. Um, we're going to start at ground zero. This is a non-runner. It's uh, come in. It's, it's not actually sat on its bump stops. The, the suspension is controlled by air, um, and it's got a little pump on the engine, like a little motorcycle engine, that actually acts as the air pump for the suspension. Belt driven from the engine, and uh, that raises the car. You have a height control valve at the back, and two height control valves, one either side at the front, which raise the car to a certain level similar to the Citroen hydraulic system on the DS and the CX, but controlled exclusively by air, and then it settles at that level. At the moment, this is not on its suspension bump stops, because Mercedes-Benz, anticipating that if something went wrong with the air suspension, again, if something bursts or if a valve leaks, or one of the bellows that actually can, uh, is in each corner, um, the air pressure vessels, uh, which are a sort of rubber, rubber and, and uh, steel, bit like a mini tyre really that um, pump the, uh, the car up horizontal and um, they push on the suspension as they inflate um, if any of those goes then the whole suspension goes poof, essentially um, or, if, or if it sinks due to natural wastage um, if you haven't run the engine for a while um, Mercedes very handily supplied some rubber blocks that you can put on the suspension to, uh, to actually make it at a reasonable height uh, so that you can push the car around because when it's on its bump stops you can't even steer the car because the front wheels actually foul the top of the wheel arches because they're so close to them. So the car becomes literally immobile. Uh, so what um, I have heard on several occasions of people who were trying to use the most expedient means to move their 600, lift them with a fault lift truck and transport them around from A to B, as you do. Um, but anyway, we, we, fortunately we won't be doing that here and that has not been done to this car. The first thing is to get it running. We start with the basics. Um, what does the engine oil look like? Has the engine got compression? Um, but the fuel system in this car was very, very badly contaminated. It's many years since this car has actually run. And the petrol um, uh, smells like, um, I don't know, something, something out of a a bottle that you charge a lot of money for and um, goes with uh, tonic or whatever. Um, it, it smelt, but in a repulsive way, not in a good way. Um, it's, uh, the petrol was pretty rank, actually. Uh, so we've, we've pumped all the fuel out of the tank. We're going to put new fuel in the tank and flush that through. And then we're going to see if we can get uh, the engine to, uh, to burst into life. Obviously, this fuel is ancient, as I have explained. It, it smells like something horrendous, otherworldly. Um, fuel is, is a big thing on classic cars, as we know. And I, I ought to dedicate a video, a separate video to that. But if I can give you one piece of instant advice, it's uh, if you have a classic car, and by that I mean car, a car even manufactured up to 2004, 2005, um, make sure, if you can, that you find E5 super unleaded petrol. Um, Tesco actually supply surprisingly good 99 octane. Um, Shell, a lot of petrol stations will um, supply E5 uh, higher octane unleaded fuel. It does help. 
Um, ethanol, it can be very damaging inside fuel systems on the older cars. It can go through metal plated components, um, eat away at them from the inside out, rubber hoses, things like that. So um, an, an instant birthday for your classic car is to treat it to um, E5 high octane unleaded fuel. Uh, and also, if you want to, there are various fuel additives on the market to, uh, to help protect the engine as well. Um, mo most classic cars these days have had their valve seats, if they needed it, have had their valve seats uh, re refitted and, and stainless steel exhaust valves fitted. Just something to bear in mind. They're pretty hardy, the fuel system and the engine. It's uh, the big Bosch 8 plunger injection pump. Uh, very complicated bit of kit and um, that is mounted in the middle of the engine and it's a sequential fuel injection system. It injects fuel to each cylinder as it, as it needs it. Um, unlike the later Bosch Cagetronic constant injection system which was more fuel efficient strangely enough than this system. Um, but anyway I'm getting ahead of myself so we're going to um, at some stage in the future, I'm going to go through the whys and wherefores uh, and we'll get up at close and personal with how the systems on this car work because it is quite something. Um, just one example that springs to mind, the water pump on the car, on the engine, the coolant pump, normally is a, uh, a sealed unit. It has two bearings in it at the front of the back to support it and a seal at the back where the coolant um, is being pumped round and an impeller to pump the water round, a self-sufficient little unit driven by a belt, not on a 600. Mercedes-Benz went crazy with these, as they did with everything. Um, and the water pump actually is thermostatically controlled by engine oil. So um, the water pump uh, revolves, driven by a belt as usual, but what happens is the, the fan, Mercedes-Benz didn't, didn't do with viscous couplings and simple fan attachments that work when they're hot and freewheel when they're cold to get air through the radiator. Mercedes-Benz used engine oil, thermostatically controlled, to enter a mini torque converter vane type assembly on the front of the water pump to actually work the fan and cause it to turn to get more air through the radiator. Um, complicated is not the word. And the problem is, if the seal goes, it leaks water into the sump. And you end up with emulsified oil, which just loves to be on a diet of eating bearing material and all sorts of wonderful things like that. So right from the get go, there are things that we have to observe on this car. But um, we're, we're just about to embark on this. It's a very interesting project. And um, we never know what we're letting ourselves in for when we start the engine and undo the hydraulic shutoff valve. What fluid's gonna come out of where, <laughs> where basically. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start on this car. Marcus and Les have been trying to gain access to the ignition switch because the steering lock stroke ignition switch assembly uh, was jammed up. So we've got that free. We can now crank uh, the engine over and we're going to put some fresh fuel in it at some stage and see if we can start to bring this behemoth back to life. <laughs> Well, that concludes another Tyrrell's Classic Workshop video. Please remember to like and subscribe. It does help the algorithm. And uh, we'll be back with something else very soon.